for the reading of the word and turn our bibles to john chapter 12 verse 9 to 19 john chapter 12 verses 9 to 19 that's the passage that we'll be reading tonight and we'll be reading from the new international version let us all read together meanwhile a large crowd of jews found out that jesus was there and came not only because of him but also to see lazarus whom he had raised from the dead so the chief priests made plans to kill lazarus as well for on account of him many of the jews were going over to jesus and believing in him the next day the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that jesus was on his way to jerusalem they took palm branches and went out to meet him shouting hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord blessed is the king of israel jesus found a young donkey and sat on it as it is written do not be afraid daughter zion see your king is coming seated on a donkey's colt at first his disciples did not understand all this only after jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him now the crowd that was with him when he called lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word many people because they had heard that he had performed this sign went out to meet him so the pharisees said to one another see this is getting us nowhere look how the whole world has gone after him amen let's pray heavenly father we thank you for the reading of your word lord we have come to worship you today and lord as we meditate from your word as we sit at your feet lord hearing your word lord i pray that every person every congregant who has come here tonight lord that you will tune our ears lord and you will mold our hearts to a degree that we'll be able to listen to your voice lord let the holy spirit convict us lord tonight lord if there is any thing that is not pleasing to you tonight lord we pray and lord we we ask forgiveness lord and we come and sit at your feet to listen to your word thank you lord for hearing our prayers in the name of jesus amen well it's a blessing to be here uh, you know on especially on this day how many of you know what what today is i thought it was a sunday okay yeah it's a palm sunday yes and you know generally christians uh we say that we do not celebrate things but we do celebrate for one reason to shout the name of jesus right whether you know if you have seen even for the weddings and for funerals no matter what occasion it is we take every opportunity to shout the gospel and that's what palm sunday is all about you know we are here to hear from the gospel now last friday uh we had heard the same passage but not from john not from the same passage but a similar account from mark you know in the 8 am service and the 10 am service uh, pastor sherry had spoken about how jesus has come to jerusalem and how people welcomed him right so what we are going to do is we are going to as we have entered into this passion week right today is uh, palm sunday then coming friday is the good friday and then coming the easter right generally we try to be sad throughout the week and easter we all get happy right but that's not that's not it we need to be always rejoicing in the lord because jesus came into this earth to die for your sins and mine right he came with that explicit purpose right he came with that purpose so that he can redeem you and me amen all right so uh the the title of the sermon is the king has come to town right how many of you know which king i am talking about i'm not definitely talking about any earthly king i am talking about a heavenly king right so we all know who is that king we are talking about and who is the king that we read in the word of god right now i'm going to ask you a simple question okay just think about it and um how many of you believe that jesus is king how many of you believe okay few hands okay 10 20 okay all right now whoever raised your hands now i'm going to say something very radical okay but before you get mad please hear me out okay 
it doesn't matter what you think whether you think jesus is king or not it doesn't matter because there are some universal truths whether you agree to that truth or not it doesn't matter because it's true regardless jesus is king when you say jesus is king there's a huge difference between saying jesus is king and saying jesus is my king right or not because when you say for example i can stand here and try to convince all of you that today is a monday right maybe i can get some people who have never seen calendars to be on my side and i can convince you that today is a monday but most of you would call my bluff right you'll know that today is a sunday you cannot lie your way out of it right it's the same way whether you believe or not jesus is the king it doesn't matter because jesus is the king and not just of this earth the universe and we are going to talk about this king who has come to town right now why am i why did i say that it doesn't matter because for a christian for a born again christian who lives and walks with jesus a christian does not live by his opinion we do not live by our opinions we do not live by the opinions that is set by this world by the news media by the worldly pressures by the society what it says we live by convictions and why is that because opinions are formulated in our brains anybody can have an opinion right today we have all the social media uh you know there is twitter instagram wherever you want to put something you can post your opinion but that does not become a conviction because conviction comes from the holy spirit and this is what we are going to know today about jesus that when jesus comes into your life he brings conviction and when jesus had come to this town people realized people started calling him my king and that's what my prayer for you is tonight if there's anybody here who knows jesus who knows about jesus but does not know him personally today is the day that you can know jesus personally and you'll have an encounter with him amen, amen. all right um this particular uh, passage that we just read this is there in uh, matthew chapter 21 from 4, 4 to 9 the same passage uh, where jesus is greeted by people and people put their palm branches and welcome jesus and sing hosanna in the highest it's also there in mark chapter 11 and it is also there in luke chapter 19 but today we are going to study from um, from the gospel of john why because john has a very unique perspective you know when john was writing his gospel uh, his audience you know the reason why he was writing was he was witnessing heavy persecution and he was seeing a lot of people who were fleeing from their faith and so he wrote the account of uh, Uh, the gospel account of according to john the reason why he wrote was to encourage people to show that jesus is indeed god you know he did not write about too much about jesus's ministry he did not write the biography of jesus but the reason why john wrote his gospel was to make sure that people will come to know the divinity of jesus how jesus is divine how jesus is a king and this is why we are going to look at now what we are going to do is we are going to go uh, we are going to do a verse by verse study and i'm sure god is going to talk to you tonight all right let's go to john chapter 12 verse 9 to 11 um so what happened here meanwhile a large crowd of jews found out that jesus was there and came not only because of him but also to see lazarus whom he had raised from the dead So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well for on account of him many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him So before you know when we read this entire passage whenever you're reading the gospel please make sure you read you know the entire chapter and not just a small passage because it is very important to read the bible in the context you know how the original audience they read this Uh, gospel we need to get into that historical aspect now we see just before this passage just before jesus was greeted in jerusalem what happened jesus was anointed at bethany by mary who was mary martha and mary ring a bell okay we have read about lazarus right so we read that jesus is going to jerusalem and a lot of people heard jesus is in town 
let's go and meet him. You know, Jesus is getting so popular. People know about Jesus. He, there is a miracle working uh, person. There is a guy who is coming and healing the sick. He's teaching in the synagogues. He's doing so many things. But there's a major thing that happened that changed the entire game. What was that? Lazarus. A lot of people went to Jesus. And this, is the, this story is there only in John. We don't see this in Matthew, Mark or Luke. So John is telling about what happened there. A lot of people when they heard about Jesus. They also heard that there is a Lazarus there. And this is the same Lazarus. Who was dead. Probably stinking. How many of you know the story of Lazarus? Okay. Praise God. Lazarus was dead. Not just one day, two days. He was in the tomb for four days. So the body is probably stinking. Okay. Can you imagine back in the day when there were no, uh, you know, morgues, no freezers to keep the body just like that? Nobody can keep that in their homes, right? Especially in the climate of Middle East. And so they had to bury um, Lazarus. And that's what they did. And it's been four days. Martha and Mary, they had trust on Jesus. They believed Jesus. But yet they could not believe that, come on, Jesus, I know Jesus heals, but can he raise up someone? That to, after four days, when the body is already rotting away, Jesus came, Jesus resurrected. What does that say about Lazarus? Lazarus had a powerful testimony, right? When people looked at Lazarus, Lazarus, people could see, are you the man whom Jesus raised? And he could say, yes, I am. And people would say, I want to meet that Jesus who raised you from the dead. What is Lazarus? Lazarus is a testimony. So a lot of people went to meet Jesus, not just because of Jesus, but also because there was Lazarus who was dead and he was raised by Jesus. And so a lot of people were excited to see what's going on. Let's go and meet this Jesus who has raised Lazarus. Does this remind, does this story of Lazarus' testimony, does it remind you of anybody? I'll tell you. Brothers and sisters, it's you and me. You know why? We were dead in sins. The Bible says we were dead in sins. We had no hope. And it is only because of the intervention of God that our spirits are renewed. You know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says... If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. He is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. And so what happens here is, people are coming to meet Lazarus to see who is this guy who Jesus has raised. And because of that testimony, Jesus' uh, testimony also has changed. Jesus' image has changed. He is no longer the miracle worker. He is no longer the teacher or the rabbi. He is the guy who has the power of resurrection in his hands. Do you know what that means? He is God himself. Because we all know there are ways to get healed. There are, you know, there are things, there are certain, there are certain powers in human hands. But the power of resurrection only, only God holds. Right? And it was widely believed in the Jewish community that forgiveness of sins and resurrection is only, can only be done by God. And so people, they knew when they heard the story of Lazarus, when they witnessed this, they knew that Jesus indeed is the Messiah. This indeed is the king that we have been waiting for. Now, my friends, I want to tell you this. Maybe you're thinking, well, I don't have a great testimony in my life. Right? You might think, I have never been that sick or I have not had, you know, problems like that or I have maybe small testimonies. First of all, that's very hard for me to believe that Jesus came into your life and you don't have a testimony. But even if you believe that you do not have a physical testimony, the greatest testimony that you have is your heart has been changed by God. Because human heart, as the word of God says, is deceitfully wicked. That's what the word of God says. You know, a lot of times we think that um, Satan is tempting me. Right? We, we say that, right? Oh, I'm getting tempted by the devil. You know, Satan does not come to tempt you. You or me both. Like, you know, it doesn't matter. You know why? You know, Satan came to tempt Jesus because Jesus did not have any sin in his heart. Jesus had to be tempted by the devil himself. 
you know he had to come satan does not waste time with you and me you know why because we are inclined to sin right if you are in a group where there is gossip going on does satan come and tell you go and gossip no right he doesn't tell you to gossip but we are inclined to do that does and does satan come and tell you lie about this lie about this be dishonest no but we are inclined towards sin that's the human nature because we are born in sin but when jesus came into our lives what happened our disposition changed what is repentance repentance is turning away changing your mind and not in words but in action you're going this way and you just turn and you go this way that's exactly what repentance is so my friends remember that all of us we have a testimony like lazarus and so what will happen is if we have the testimony of lazarus people are going to come and meet you to meet jesus amen people are going to look at you and say what is this brother or this sister has that i don't i want to meet that jesus who is this person who made this lazarus stinking and rotting in the tomb and now he's alive so when people look at you whether it's your workplace your neighborhood anywhere when people look at you when they see your testimony they are going to come to know jesus and if if friends if you don't have that testimony in your life maybe your walk with god is not right because every person who comes to christ is a new creation you will have an amazing journey it will be tough but it will be worth it and so what will happen is god will use you and your testimony so that jesus will use your testimony to reach out to people so you are a living testimony you know what does the word of god says we have we have so many uh, identities in christ and what happens is we 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 forget those identities one of those identities is what we are ambassadors of christ ambassadors of christ you know what ambassadors mean a uh, couple of weeks back we had uh, the ambassador of ukraine and people from the embassy come and pray here you know look at the aura you can see from a long distance that's the ambassador's team right what do people look at you and say does do we look like ambassadors of christ an ambassador does not have just authority they have responsibility also so when we go out in the world you make sure that the testimony that god has given in your heart it is well shined upon the people otherwise the lazarus that god has resurrected will have no value amen so if you do not have a testimony it's okay i mean people struggle with this all the time and and people think that you know i am too big of a sinner god cannot forgive me god cannot love me i have done this i have done that no sin is too big that god cannot forgive so if you are struggling with something let me tell you the king that we serve he has raised people from the dead and so your sin do not do not think of so highly of yourself that you think that your sins are too big you know that would be pride actually whatever you have done god has already you know given you victory through his death that's what we are celebrating here today amen so when you go out to the world when you go to your marketplace to your workplace remember who you are what's your identity in christ that you already have a testimony and that testimony cannot break because when people look at you you are an ambassador of christ and you have a testimony and your every action is accountable to god amen let's go to the next verse uh, let's go to the verse 12 and 13 which says the next day the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that jesus was on his way to jerusalem they took palm branches and went out to meet him shouting hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord blessed is the king of israel amen so after jesus uh, you know after lazar people are coming to meet lazarus and jesus and then jesus goes into jerusalem this is where the historical palm sunday tradition comes from right so all these people they are just welcoming him uh, with their palm branches uh, palm branch back in the day used to mean victory or peace you know it was a victory symbol so jesus is coming and people are going and welcoming him with the, with their cloaks and with their uh, palm branches saying that what does that signify they are people are acknowledging that you are our king you are the victorious king right 
This is where the tradition of Palm Sunday comes. Because Palm, Palm Sunday is not about having, you know, nice uh, props to take away. It is to realize that Jesus already declared victory even before his death. Because that is why he came for. Jesus is already a conqueror. And so when people saw that, people went to him and shouted what? Hosanna. Right? Today we sang this, right? Hosanna in the highest. I think it was a worship team. I think it was during the... Uh, uh, pre-service uh, songs or uh, I think I heard people singing Hosanna in the highest. What does it Hosanna mean? Hosanna literally literally translates into save us. Today when we sing Hosanna we mean it as a praise. Yes, it, it becomes a praise. It is a hymn. When we say Hosanna we are basically acknowledging that oh my king Jesus you are my king who only who you can save us. That's what we are declaring. And not just that. Can you imagine if, if a king walks in and you go and bow down to him and you say, save me king. What does that mean? It means that first of all, it means you are acknowledging that he is your king. Right? Second of all, you are pledging your allegiance to that king. So this is what happened. When people saw Jesus, they believed in him. They said, you are the king. And and these are Jewish people, you know, they had been reading the Old Testament. They knew all the prophecies about the coming Messiah. And so what they say, blessed is the king of Israel. So they have already given the title to Jesus. They have already acknowledged Jesus is our king, right? Now, the irony of all of this is after a week, not even a week, right? After four days. On Friday, you know, on the fifth day. The same people who are shouting Hosanna in the highest and oh king save us. These same people are shouting what? Crucify him. Talk about changing of mind. This is like completely 180 degree, right? How can someone who is pledging allegiance to a king. Not even just a week later is shouting saying that. Crucify him. What happened to these people? Now we'll get into it. Let's go to the next verse. John chapter 12 verse 14 and 15. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming. Seated on a donkey's colt. Uh, if you have read, uh, I think it's, it's either in Mark or Matthew, the passion narrative, you know, when Jesus is going to be crucified. And Jesus is standing in the garden of Gethsemane, right? And all these arresting officers come to arrest Jesus. And one of the disciples gets angry and he just takes his sword and, you know, cuts the ear off of one of the arresting officers. And so Jesus, you know, what is his reply to his disciples? He's saying, keep your sword away. If I wanted, I could have brought angels down here for my protection. But Jesus did not choose to do that. Do you see the humility of this king? He can, you know, there, there's a proverb that says, just because you can, doesn't mean you should. You know, it's not your power that should define what you should do. You know, it's, it, should be your, it should be your decision making. Why are you doing something? Jesus came here for a purpose, right? And so Jesus, he's coming on, on this, uh, you know, uh, on this, uh, in, in this road, and people are just worshipping him and, and, and you know saying that you are our king. But he's coming on a donkey. Have you ever heard of a king come on a donkey? What does that tell you about a king? He could have come on a horse. But that would mean that he's coming to show his power. Right? So whatever vehicle you used, that would be, you know, that would signify something. But Jesus came on a donkey. And the verse that we see in verse 15, which says, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See... Your king is coming seated on a donkey's colt. This is actually a prophecy from the book of Zechariah. This has been already prophesied that the king of Israel is coming on a donkey. Now, Jesus is such a humble king, right? He's coming. People are just worshipping him and adoring him. People are singing Hosanna in the highest. Now I'll go back to the, the previous question that I asked. How is it possible that you such, see such a beautiful Humble king, the, the king of the people. You know, Jesus was not the king of the elites. You know, of the best in the society. No. 
He ate with sinners. He went out with people who were, you know, who of, were of questionable characters. And Jesus said, I'm not here for the people who are doing well. You know, I'm here for the sick and the poor. And so Jesus was a king. Jesus, in his humility, he's showing that Jesus is a king, not just of, not just of poor people, but even the outcasts, you know, the disenfranchised, people who have been long forgotten by the society, people who are, you know, and these people, when they see their humble king, they're starting to worship him and say, Hosanna, save us. And four days later, these people are saying, crucify him. Now, I'll go to this question. Why, what happened to these people? Why they were shouting, crucify him after four days. Now, let's, uh, for that, let's go to Matthew chapter 27, verse 20. Matthew chapter 27, verse 20. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. So the key word here is, persuaded the crowd. Right? Now you must be thinking, what does that have to do with, with Palm Sunday? Very important. Jesus was adored, loved by all these people. Four days later, people are just saying, crucify him, crucify him. What happened to these people who were saying, Jesus, you're my king? They came under the pressure of the authority. They forgot because people were persuading them. You know what? Tell, crucify him, crucify him. And these people who wanted to arrest Jesus and crucify Jesus, they were going and, and convincing people, let's go, let's go. You know, shout, crucify him. We want Barabbas. Don't care if he's a murderer, but we want Jesus to be crucified. And so the same people who were worshipping him a few days ago and saying that you are our king, they were putting their own cloaks and you know, own palm branches and they were worshipping him. The same people are saying, I don't know you. Not only they are denying Jesus, but they are saying that we want you killed. Now you'll think, no, I am not that bad. Right? I sin, but I am not that bad. Right? Think about it once again. How many times do we deny Jesus on a, on a daily basis? When we go out, when we are at work, when we are not in church. Because in church we are singing Hosanna in the highest. Right? In the church we know the king is alive. We sang the song today, right? The king is alive. But what happens when we live out in the world? You know, there are times when we deny Jesus all the time. So this is my prayer for you tonight. That if you have, if you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord, as your king, I pray that you would continue to obey him even when nobody is seeing, even when you are under the pressure of the society. Because this society, this worldly Society is going to put pressure on you to, for you to renounce your identity in Christ. That's what the world will try. You know, your friends will say, come on, let's go party. What's the harm in that? Jesus also turned water into wine. Let's do that. Right? And then, okay, yeah, why not? Okay. Just two days ago, you were saying, Hosanna in the highest. What happened? Right? There will be trials and temptations all along the way. But we need to know who we are in Christ. You know, as I said earlier, we give a lot of credit to Satan at times. Right? We say, brother, Satan is just after me. He's not. He's not. First of all, Satan cannot touch you without the permission of our God. You know why? why we are protected by the lamb. Lamb's blood. We have been washed by his, by his blood. Do you think anybody can just come and touch you like that? Know your position in Christ. Know who you are in Christ. You know, the biggest problem of the believers right now in what is happening throughout the world is, and I'm not saying I'm perfect on this. We all are a work in progress. But the biggest issue that we have right now is we forget who we are in Christ. You know, if we just remember or if we can remind ourselves who we are in Christ, you are a child of God. Do you think anybody can just come and do whatever they please to you? No. Now, that does not mean that you go and pick up a fight tomorrow and say, you know what, I am a child of God. No, that does not work. Because our fight is not with the world. It's, it's with principalities and powers of the dark world. Amen. So, when you go out there in the world, and when there is so much pressure for you to deny Jesus, for you to say, I do not know Jesus. Remember, you are a child of God. He, you know, I was just 
recently i was reading a book wonderful book by uh, neil anderson there is books in uh, bethel library from that author wonderful book and that he he mentioned uh, one thing which really got to my heart you know submitting to god and resisting the devil is actually a privilege given to the children of god do you know it how it is how much it is difficult to submit to god and to resist the devil you think you can be tempted and you can fight your way against satan and his and his schemes you can't on your own you need jesus so you need to know who you are in christ amen you need to know who you are in christ unless we know who are in, who we are in christ things will not move and we'll always be under that double life you know sin confess sin confess sin confess and then getting all the way depressed oh god how much longer should i live this life i'm trying to be better but i cannot be unless we submit to god unless we resist the devil in the name of jesus you don't have to do it yourself because the authority that has been given to us is not our authority it's the authority that is given by jesus it's jesus's authority that has been delegated to you and me so in that we stand and we say you cannot satan you cannot put me down because i am a child of god next time you're facing a temptation try this submit to god and say no and see the wonder working holy spirit how he will lead you and brothers and sisters this is my prayer today if you are in some kind of bondage and if you feel that i need prayer i need help please go and meet leaders there are leaders here there are elders please come and see them we'll pray with you we'll stand with you you know all of us go through different struggles right but that does not mean that we'll forget who we are amen now let's let's go to the uh, the the next verse john chapter 12 verse 16 says at first his disciples did not understand all this only after jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him so he's talking about the disciples themselves disciples who have been with jesus for three and a half years even they could not realize what was happening i mean it takes time it's okay if you are in faith if you are uh, you know walking with the lord there are so many things that you don't understand and you are feeling like a failure it'll take time but you need the holy spirit what once the holy spirit was poured upon these disciples they knew everything they were reminded of everything now let me ask you a question which all months have 28 days february okay okay so i know how many of watch tiktok now okay yes thank you like uh, praise god we have uh, all of your intelligence yes all the months right but if you haven't heard this question before the first thing that comes in your mind is february right all the months have 28 days but february because february has only 28 days right now let me ask you similar on the similar lines a trick question biblically okay who was the disciple who denied jesus except judas now this should be easy sorry i heard peter peter okay let's go to matthew chapter 26 verse 33 to 35 matthew chapter 26 33 to 35 peter replied even if i fall away on account of you i never will truly i tell you jesus answered this very night before the rooster crows you will disown me three times but peter declared even if i have to die with you i will never disown you there is a sentence after that and all the other disciples said the same and we like to villainize uh, peter at times ah, what peter denied jesus he was trying to be a hero jesus no whoever says i will not go right jesus is walking on the water peter is the brave heart peter says jesus can i come and then he you know after a few steps he's drowning and then we we'll look at that and we say ah, what faith peter had. at least he's better than the bunch of them who are sitting in the boat at least he tried right peter at least he had you know he thought that he had the will to stand against you know uh pilot and all these arresting officers he thought he really meant it i i genuinely feel that he meant it when he said to his his master 
Jesus, if I am willing to die for you. And Jesus is like, okay, all right, you can't. Because unless you go, when you have the Holy Spirit, then only you will have that conviction. And then what happened? The rest of the disciples said what? Said the same thing. So yes, Peter denied Jesus. That's an account because Peter was the only one who said, uh, Jesus, I will not deny you. And then Jesus says, you will. Let's see. And that happened. And then what happened? The other disciples, they also said, Jesus, we will also. That's not, uh, you know, we don't pay attention to that. And then what happened? What, where were all these 11 disciples? Sorry, 10 disciples when Jesus was hanging on the cross? Nowhere to be found. In a way, they all deserted Jesus. Even the women, you know, even the people who were um, around him, they were even, even they were at a distance from Jesus when he was on the cross. Now, why did the disciples run away? Why did the disciples run away? They were scared for their lives. You know, all these disciples, they have been there for three and a half years, ministering with Jesus, casting out demons, you know, casting out demons, healing the sick, teaching and preaching. And when the time came for Jesus' arrest and Jesus' crucifixion, there's nobody to be found. Now, this happened to the disciples. This happened to the crowd, right? Jesus was deserted all alone. Now, this is where I'm coming to. We are very fortunate and blessed to be here in this nation of Kuwait, to be able to, uh, you know, worship God in freedom, right? Uh, I'm not sure if you have heard this wonderful story where uh, where on a Sunday morning wonderful worship is going on people are just crying worshipping with their hands uh, lifted high they are saying Jesus I will live for you I will die for you and suddenly there are three masked terrorists who come with guns blazing and they say you know, they look at all the congregants suddenly the worship goes dead drop silence and so, these masked terrorists, they say, whoever, is, whoever will deny Jesus can go. Or whoever wants to stay and will not deny Jesus, they'll be killed. So a lot of people ran. I wonder if that would happen today. And who will stay? Right? And so what happened was, most of the people, they just ran for their lives. Right? Who is going to stand with the terrorists, Right? I mean, they made the right decision, probably. And so, there were just hardly five or six people left. And so, these uh, terrorists, they just remove their masks. They keep their toy guns aside. That's when they, everyone comes to know it's a toy gun. And they say, you know what? We were just looking for real worshippers. Now, let's worship the Lord together. <laughs> Turned out these were Christians. Now, if that would happen to us, what is God looking from his worshippers? He is looking for worshippers who will worship him, him in truth and in spirit. What is the truth? Truth is Jesus is king. Right? What, and when we worship God, we don't worship just, just by words. God is looking for worshippers who will worship him throughout the week. Through their actions. You know, denying Jesus or obeying Jesus is not a matter of words. You can say I obey God. You can say I don't deny Jesus. But it is through your actions that you will, that you can see whether you are an obedient child of God or not. And so when you obey God, you know, as Pastor Sherry, he always says this, God is looking for true worshippers and true worship comes from obedience. And so there will be, there will be times when, when we might fall. We, we cannot be perfect, but we can try. And we do not have to do it on our own. We have to depend upon the Holy Spirit. Right? We cannot... Just say, God, I cannot. If you are today singing the song, Hosanna in the highest, you should not be in a place where you say, crucify him, I do not know Jesus. And at one point of time or, or any other point of, in life, you might have denied Jesus. You might have gone against him. You know, there is a very interesting thing about, about kingship. So if you have a king, and there are only two people, two kinds of people towards the king. Either you say that you are my king or you say no. So the moment you do not pledge your allegiance to king, who are you? You are a rebel. Right or not? That's how the kingship works. Either you obey the king, either you bow down to the king. If you don't, you are a rebel. 
right? Jesus did not bow down to the earthly kings. And so what happened? He was crucified. We know from the book of Daniel, what happened to the three young men who said that we will not bow down to an earthly um, idol of a king. He is not our God. They were thrown into fire. And so this fire will come into your life as Christians. But then as long as you're obedient, as long as you're loyal to your king, he will take care of you. This is my prayer for you. That no matter what you're going through, we all have struggles, we all go through difficult circumstances. But no matter what, Jesus has a plan for you. And if you have come here today thinking, you know, let me just go to church. Today is Palm Sunday. Don't just go back with the palm branches. Go with obedience. Go with the love of Christ in your hearts. Amen. All right. Let's go to the final verses, which says, Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, see, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Now, when we initially read the passage, you saw what the Pharisees were planning. What were they planning? They were planning to kill Lazarus so that there is no testimony for Jesus that he can raise people from the dead. They planned and planned. And what happened? So two things happened. Number one, even the people who saw Lazarus, they started bearing witness. They started preaching about Jesus. They started telling about what, what Jesus is, who Jesus is. And the second thing what happened is, all the plannings of the enemy went down the drain. Now, if you are a child of God, the enemy will come, will, will come blazing against you. You know, he will come with plans. But guess what? Those plans are not going to work. The Bible says, no weapon formed against you will prosper. If you are a child of God, you need to know that the enemy can make plan. Let's kill Lazarus. Let's kill your testimony. Let me do something to you so that your testimony is gone. So that nobody can see Jesus through you. But guess what? The enemy cannot touch you. That's what happened. People, they just gave up. They are like, we cannot do anything. Now, see, the whole world is going to Jesus. That's what happened. At the end of the day, everybody was going to Jesus. Now, you have a testimony, my friends. And whether you know it or not, today, I was so happy when I saw, when, uh, when I came here. Two weeks ago, we were praying for uh, uh, Johan. And today, I see him, you know, playing on the drums. This is who our God is. He heals your physical body and he heals your spirit. And there is not a single time that you can say that God does not listen to my prayers. He will say yes. He will say no. He will also tell you to wait. But he will definitely answer your prayers. You just have to wait upon the Lord. Now when you go out from here, know that you are a child of God. You have a testimony. You are someone who came here and sang Hosanna. Tomorrow, don't go on denial mode on him. When, when temptations come your way, you know, when financial struggles come your way, when tragedies happen in your life, do not say, God, you did this to me. You know, God sometimes allows sufferings in our lives. For sure, he does. You know, when, when Martha and Mary called Jesus, sent out a word, Jesus, come soon, my brother is dying. And Jesus waited a few days to come. And when Jesus went there, he cried with them. He, you know, he, he, he empathized. And then what he said, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Amen. You will see the glory of God. Now, I want to leave you with uh, just one question. Before that, I will uh, tell you one small story. Uh, so there's this woman, Mary, you know, she's a wonderful businesswoman. And uh, because of COVID, the business went down, right? Not a real story though but I just inserted the COVID part. So this lady, she has lost her business. She does not have any source of income. Her children are starving. And so she's, and she's a, uh, you know, uh, she's a born again Christian. So she starts praying. She starts getting on her knees and saying, God, please provide me for my family. I don't have any source of income. Can you, and I am under a lot of debt. Can you please help me win the lottery? I want to win the lottery, please. And so she doesn't win the lottery. 
Next day, she prays the same. And after a week, the debt is piling. She doesn't have money. She, her children are starving and she doesn't have money to pay off her debts. Nothing. And then she prays again, God, please, I want to win the lottery. She doesn't win the lottery again. And so after two weeks, she goes on rebellion. She says, God, what is this? You don't listen to me anymore? You don't answer my prayers? I'm dying here. You, are you willing to see your child die? Can't you just give me a lottery to win? So suddenly the heavens open and there's a sound from the heaven. And God says, can you meet me halfway? I have heard your prayers, but at least go and buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> Point of the story is, don't overstress yourself thinking what God will do. He will do his job. He's unchangeable, unstakeable, unstoppable. That's what we sang today. So we have to worry what we need to do. Right? Let's, let's go to him. Let's meet him halfway. Right? Let's meet him half, halfway. So this is my question that I want to leave you with. Jesus has already come to town. Have you gone out to meet him or not? If you have not, this is the opportunity. Because Jesus has already come to the town. Everybody knows it. Today is your day. Go and meet him. That is your responsibility. Because Jesus welcomes everyone. Jesus never turns anyone away. No matter how huge your pile of sins, debt, shame, depression, whatever you're going through is, Jesus will never say no. All you have to do is say, Lord, save us. Save me. Hosanna in the highest. You are my God. When you pledge allegiance to Jesus, when you say you are my Lord, he will take care of you. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful word of yours, Lord. Thank you, Lord, as today is Palm Sunday, Lord, and we thank you for the reminder from your word, the word Hosanna to save us, Lord. We just want to remind ourselves tonight, Lord, that we belong to you, Lord. And thank you, Lord, that you have had a plan for us, for all of us, from the, before the foundation of the world. And you have seen us in Christ. And you already have protected us from the enemy, Lord. Lord, we pray for each and everyone who has come here tonight, Lord. I pray that every person who has come here tonight, Lord, no matter what the baggage is, I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, they will meet you today, Lord. And Lord... I pray that your Holy Spirit would minister to them, Lord. Lord, if there's anyone here, Lord, who has baggage in their hearts and going through tremendous amount of stress, I pray, Lord, that you will give them, uh, Lord, you will just take them in your arms, Lord, and you will console them and you will give them strength to carry on and remind them that you are still in control and you are our King, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your word. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.